Chugga chugga! Choo choo! Chugga chugga! Choo choo! What are you doing, Brandon? Oh, I'm in the middle of a competition. It's called an Iron Man. Oh, it's pretty brutal. Looks like it. What about you? Chugga chugga! Choo choo! Chugga chugga! Choo choo! I'm training. Cool. Chugga chugga! Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm. And I'm. Ugh. And I'm John. And you picked a doozy of a week to tune in. Yes, you did. Not only are we kicking off a month talking about the skills you need to help your faith grow, but John has taken up a new sport. Well, this is not just a sport. It's a way of life, Brandon. It's a way of life. You Woo! can't tell. John is now a boxer. No, 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 no. You're selling it short. I have not cut carbs, worked out sort of, and drunk disgusting milkshakes just for boxing. I'm a boxer and a thinker. Oh. You are now looking at a pro. You have to get paid to be a pro. A future pro chess boxer. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I've committed my body and my brain to this new endeavor. I'm all in. I've made a plan and I'm putting it into practice. I'm proud of you, John. Thanks. I think this could be great. <laughs> so this, is a, this is an actual thing that people do, like with, with coat racks for pieces and stuff you know, like that. I, I didn't do a ton of research. I just saw the words chess, boxing, and knew I had to try it. Okay, so uh, how do you play? Oh, well, you know, I, I figure we play chess like normal, and when two of the pieces run into one another, they box. Oh, that sounds, sounds violent. Are, are you sure that's how it goes? Of course! Okay. Probably. You know, I took a class online. I've, I've got an instructor and everything. Look. Welcome to Chess Boxing for Beginners, a sport that demands not only physical prowess, but mental resilience as well. Let's go over the basics in order for you to understand. We'll skip this. Your online class came with a cassette tape? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. You don't think you should be listening to that? Yeah, yeah. oh, well, let's see. And now you're ready to play. <laughs> See, we're ready. What? Okay, you be on that side and I'll be on this side. Okay. Hey, no, no, I don't have any boxing gloves. Oh, we can fix that. Hold on. <laughs> hey. Oh. Okay. Thanks. A good starting move is pawn to e4. Great. Now, uh, which one's a pawn? Are you serious? You don't know what a pawn is? You have to listen in class, John. <laughs> no, chess is hard, you know? Come on, John. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm, I, I know what a pawn is. All right. It's... It's this, this one. Uh -huh, right. <laughs> okay. All right, and boom. Is that E4? I don't know. Your turn. Okay, I'm not really an expert or anything, so I'll just, I'll move my, uh, my knight. That's oh. what this is called. Knights always move in an L shape. Mm -hmm. So just move you in the L shape. Uh, not smart, Sorry, Brandon. Fella. Not smart. If your opponent opens with their knight, try the Sicilian defense. <laughs> I got you now, I so got you. And what's the Sicilian defense? I have no idea. I'll just move, uh, uh, I'll just move this one. No, you all right. Can you do that? Just did. Just... All right, let's box. Come on. Come on, knight. <laughs> All right, that was aggressive. That's chest boxing. Your move. Okay. Here we go. Let's box. That's not fair. Listen. That was totally fair. What? If your match isn't going as you hoped, don't get discouraged. Things aren't always as bad as they seem. 
great advice. Okay, my turn, my turn. So, uh, ooh, L shape, L shape, L shape, L shape. Whoa, smash, smash, L shape. <laughs> All right, that seems wrong, okay. but okay. All right. What? What? No, but that. L, sh L shape! L shape! Oh. I think I win. Wait a second, we still need a, we still need a box. What? Wait, yeah. no, no, but I already won. No, 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 let's box. What are let's you talking box. about? I will break you. I will break you. Okay. Come on, come what on. Are you, doing? you have to punch me now. I'm not gonna punch you. Yeah, you need to punch you. me. I'm not gonna punch you. You have to punch I'm, me! Okay. Punch me! Ah! I would, I just. I nose, you punched me in the nose! Yeah, but I didn't punch you in the ears! If you would have listened to your chess boxing instructor, maybe you would have known what you were doing. Maybe. Ugh. Would you like to listen to the Bible story? I think I probably should. Me too. It's Bible story time! Ugh. That was quite a start to the month. He punched me in the nose. He told me to. I did, I told him to. I heard. I also heard you may or may not have a problem with listening. Sorry, what did you say? I think today's Bible story, or actually Bible verse, may help. It's pretty short, so maybe you'll be able to take it in. Take what in? That sounds like a great idea, let's hear it. All this month, we are talking about certain skills. Skills that when you make a commitment to practice them, it can help your faith grow. And as you may have guessed, the skill we are talking about this week is listening. But it might be a different kind of listening than you're used to. In Psalm 119, 105, we read, Your word is like a lamp that shows me the way. It is like a light that guides me. Now, when we read this verse, what was that? It's time to break down the verse with Coach Scooter Sharp. Oh, this should be fun. All right, team. Are you ready to analyze, scrutinize, and investigate today's Bible verse? Then gather around, huddle up, and crowd together in a close-knit jumble because Coach Scooter Shop is here to show you how it's done. Thanks for your help, Coach. I am here for it. Excellent. Let's dive in. Your word is like a lamp that shows me the way. It's like a light that guides me. It's beautiful. It's exemplary. And also, it's super cool. Now, what does it mean? Let's start at the top. Your word. Whose word? Who are we talking about? We're talking about Abraham Lincoln's word? Nah. We're talking about Queen Victoria's word? Nah. One of the Backstreet Boys? <laughs> no. In this verse, your is talking about the one, the only, the capital, G-O-D, God. Now that you know that, you should really listen up, hunker down, and zone in, because this is gonna be big. Now, what about the next word? Word. Oh, you want me to chime in? You bet, Jeanette. This is a team sport. Knock me down with some of your perspicacity and insight. All right. Wow, okay, sure. I think God's word is any word that God says. We know a lot of what God has said because people wrote God's words down. Now we can read them for ourselves in the Bible. Boom, we're on the same page, speaking the same language and barking up the same tree. Nice work. Ruff, ruff. Thanks. But we're still not through. Let's keep at it. Now, your word is like a lamp. Now, what is that? That is a simile, Emily. It's a figure of speech. God's word isn't literally a lamp. Now, when you read and listen to the words God has said, it can help you see where to go and help you know how to make the wise choices. It can be like seeing the light from the lamp. Right, and the next part is the same. It is like a light that guides me. 
If we didn't have God's words, it would feel like we were walking around in the dark with no idea where we were going. Reading and listening to God's words can guide you through the dark times in your life. Now we're cooking with gasoline, Christine. Let's see how we can land this jumbo jet. Your God's word, which we find in the Bible, is like a lamp that shows me the way. It's like a light. that guides me. So when we read the Bible, it can be like we're hearing from God and it can help us navigate, operate, and maneuverate through this crazy life we're living. I love it. What do you say we put this verse to the test with some real time plays? I think that's a great idea, Coach. Let's look at another verse in the Bible and see how it can help show us the way. In Ephesians 4.32, we read, Be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another, just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. No problem, Boblin. Let's say your little brother, Xavier, got past your defense and into your room, where he took your favorite toy and accidentally Throw it out the window. Boom. Now, that would make me angry. But you have a choice to make. You could make a no little brother sign, stick it on your door. You could double up your defense, or you could put barbed wire around your door, or you could even build a moat there, or you could put a sprinkler system in there to get him all wet when he runs in there. Or, you can listen to what God says. You can remember what Jesus did and how God forgives you. Then, you can choose to forgive Xavier. Let him back in your room again. Just tell him to be a little more careful next time. Awesome, Coach. Let's do one more. In James 1.19, we read, Everyone should be quick to listen, but they should be slow to speak. They should be slow to get angry. Once more into the breach. Now, you walk into the cafeteria carrying your tray full of nice Salisbury steak. You see your friends, and they're sitting at your favorite table. As you get closer, you overhear them talking about how your style of clothes are a little out of style. Now these are your friends, and they're talking bad about you behind your back. That ain't nice, Bryce. You could make another choice. You could march right up to them. You could talk to your quote friends and shout, hey, I dress better than you do. I heard what you were saying. I thought you were my friends. You're wearing a bunch of zips. Oh, you ruined Salisbury Steak Day. Or, you can hear what God said. You can be quick to listen. Maybe what they were saying wasn't as bad as you thought. Or even if it was bad, you could be slow to get angry. Tell them how they made you feel and sit down and enjoy yourself a nice plate of Salisbury steak. That's terrific, Coach. Thank you so much for your help today. <laughs> That's what I do, Lasha Rule. Now let's get out there and reign Victoria. So just, you know, do our best. Go team! What'd you think, fellas? So uh, it seems like listening is important. Definitely. When you don't listen, you may not know where to go or what to do. It's easy to lose your way. 
or you can get punched in the nose. <laughs> That's certainly true in chess boxing, but in our lives, we should listen to God's words because God loves us and knows what's best for us. And know this, hearing from God is a skill you develop over time. It's something you have to be committed to and work on. Oh, thank you so much. We are listening to you. Listening to who? John. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I heard everything. Hearing from God is a skill you have to work on. You got it. I'll see you next time. Great lesson. Yeah, it sure was. You know, but I do have a question. Oh, then reveal the question. How can you hear from God? Uh, well, one way is to have a quiet time set aside to spend with God. Sometimes I read the Bible, sometimes I pray. But the important thing is to take time to focus and listen to what God might be trying to tell me. Yeah, and that can look different to everyone. Uh, some people like to get out in nature or, or listen to music. Mm -hmm. I sometimes put Bible verses in places where I can see them throughout the day. Oh, that's great. So what about you? How can you hear from God? Talk about it together, and we'll see you next time on... Rematch! Woo! Stop. Ow! The so-and-so show! Oh, oh, oh. oh, you weren't wearing your mouthpiece. Yeah, it's my tooth. <laughs> Where did you say your grandmother got this? Uh, I think on an expedition. Ar archaeological. I mean, it's not worth like a ton though, right? I mean, I mean not when it was originally made, no. Oh. Getting it. Yeah, that's it. That looks right. Yep, that's perfect. Hold on. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh, careful. Nope, I got it. I got it. <sighs> See, look at that. Oh, oh. I don't think Grandma's gonna. You don't think she'll notice? <laughs>